Hi, I hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to Nico Venture. Hisashiburi desu yo ne. Happy New Year and belated Merry Christmas. If you've watched my videos, you may have surmised that I was neither an EPA or a TITP applicant. I came here as a student. Yes, I studied Japanese back in the Philippines, but those were just the basics. Essentially, I came here in Japan without caregiving experience and mediocre Japanese skills. Even if you are an EPA or a TATP applicant, you may experience what I experienced when I had my first job here in this country as a care worker. In this video, I'll share with you the things I experienced upon working as a care worker here in Japan for the very first time. My voice might be a little funny, but let's begin. Kaiwa. Kaiwa everywhere. Kaiwa in English is conversation or dialogue, but in the workplace, they usually use this. For the first few days or weeks in your job, your Japanese employers and co-workers would want to see you speak their tongue. And there's no better way to do that but to have you speak with their residents, the residents, the elderly. Not all of them, but most of them. Through communicating and conversing with the residents, they, the Japanese, the Japanese co-workers, and your employer will evaluate your speaking and comprehension skills. Now, my problem at that time was not only that I had a limited, a very limited Japanese vocabulary, but also the residents, the elderly that I am talking to, suffered a stroke. And you don't need a degree in medicine to know that a person who suffered a stroke may have difficulty speaking. So as you can imagine, I really had a hard time understanding those people. On top of that, they did not only use garbled words, but also they speak in their local dialect, a variation of the Japanese language that I did not learn in the Japanese language school, both in the Philippines and here in Japan. On top and on top of that, while I was pretending to communicate and understand what the elderly is saying to me, the staff are right behind me, standing and actively listening to our conversation. So yeah, I might as well have been in the deepest point of the ocean floor because of the intense pressure. Hello, how are you? I am under the water. Furthermore, if you're about to work in a facility with no residents who suffered a stroke, don't get your hopes up just yet. Remember that you're dealing with people who are almost 100 years of age and the human body was not designed to last that long without some physical and physiological deterioration. Deterioration. What I'm trying to say is this, even if you won't deal with a resident who suffered a stroke, there's still a 99.9% .9 chance that you will deal or you will meet a resident or residents with dementia. It is a chronic disorder of mental processes, of the mental processes, our mental processes, caused by disease, injury, and even age. So when I came here, my problems were... I have a very limited Japanese vocabulary and my residents, almost all of them, either suffered stroke or dementia or both. And the staff are actively listening behind my back to our conversation. Oof. Oof. So yeah, I think that was my routine for almost a month back then. I come to work. Instead, I didn't do any work. I sat down with an elderly and pretend to talk to them, pretend to understand them for 8 hours. And when one of us gets bored, I just stood up, go to another table, and talk to another elderly person. And believe me, it's not as easy as one might think. Establishing rapport with a person suffering dementia and with a nationality different from you will never be easy. Moreover, talking to a person with dementia is quite a challenge. There will always be an episode of Flight of Ideas, and most of the time, you will be listening to a long sermon of words that, honestly speaking, doesn't have any meaning at all. Just imagine you're trying to start a conversation with a person suffering from dementia about Japanese food and that person's response to you is an essay of The worst part is, at least for me, that to start a conversation with them, you'll have to introduce yourself time and time again and ask the same open-ended questions for what feels like an eternity. And when you can't understand the, what the resident is saying to you, always, always, every time, not only me, but I know most of you, our response is, So this ne. So this ne. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Finding memo. 
No one told me this at that time, but now I'm telling you this. On your first day of work, bring these. Here in Japan, when you're the newbie in a caregiving facility, regardless of nationality, you will always be paired with the Japanese staff, most of the time a senior Japanese staff. He or she will accompany you for your first few weeks or months until you will be deemed worthy to be left alone at work. But there are so many things that this person will teach you in Japanese. And honestly speaking, I can't remember all of that at that time. And the worst part is that I didn't bring any of these. So I had to ask a piece of paper from them. Unfortunately, at that time, they only had a quarter of sheet of paper, a one-fourth sheet of paper. It was small, very small. It was quite embarrassing and it gave them the impression that I came to work unprepared. So yeah, on your first day of work, don't forget to bring these, these, and of course a pen to write whatever your senior is saying to you. In my case, at that time, I jot my notes down using English and my native dialect, Bisaya, because that's what I'm used to. It was really easy for me. My senior took a glance at my notes and he said, What kind of night? I care. I really didn't say that. Taking notes is very crucial because it doesn't only allow you to jot down the things that are being told to you, but also it allows you to write your workflow. Like this workflow. Not this one, not this one. This is a mirror. A mirror. Actually, when I was doing the videos about caregiver duties and work shifts or workflow, I actually used these notes. My old notes these notes as an indispensable resource of information. Furthermore, having a handy dandy notebook and a pen also allows you to write the names of your co-workers and the residents, especially the residents. Quite frankly, I really found it hard to remember the names of the people here, so what I did at that time is to write their names down exclusively in hiragana during my first few weeks at work. Remembering the names of your co-workers is one thing, but remembering the names of your residents is in a whole new level entirely. Remember that your residents have been living on this planet for almost a century. The same goes for their names. Japanese names from over a centuries ago are, comparatively speaking, different, somewhat different from the modern names most Japanese people here have. As a result, some of the residents are still using outdated or old kanji characters with outdated or old ways of reading, making their names rare even for a Japanese. I found it relatively easy to memorize or familiarize myself with these names. But I found these names extremely frustrating. So yeah, the bottom line is write down their names, both your co-workers and residents' names, both in hiragana and kanji. A lot of time to familiarize yourself with them, especially those which are written in a kanji you seldom encounter. Copy and paste. As I mentioned earlier, when you're the newbie caregiving staff, you will always be accompanied by a senior Japanese staff. That's for the entirety of your 8-hour shift. The duration of this body system depends on when you will be deemed suitable enough to be left alone at work. But during those several weeks with your senior staff, you will be taught about a lot of things which includes how to wash dishes and how to wipe a man's ass. At this time, the only thing you'll do is to observe, take notes, and remember how things are done as shown to you by your superior or your, your senior. The method your senior showed you on how to do things must be followed to the letter. Remember that they have been in this field of work long before I even considered working in this country. Although it's not 100% foolproof, you can say their method is tested and proven. The bed maker. In my first three months of work, I didn't do any caregiving. However, I did a lot, and I mean a lot, of bed making. No, not that kind of making in bed. I meant making the bed, sheets, the linens. For those of you who neither had nursing or caregiving or hotel and restaurant backgrounds, bed making is an act of preparing the bed, sheets, the linens, and preparing the bed itself for use. It's a household chore but is also performed in other establishments like Japanese elderly home. 
Yeah, you heard it right. For three months after being inducted as an employee, whenever my senior had other things to deal with, I was left to make the beds of the residents. All of them. In Japanese, it's called rinen or shitsukokan. And in this country, much like in the Philippines, bed making is an art. But it's not only about beauty and presentation. Wrinkles and creases contributes to the development of pressure ulcers, more commonly known as bed sores. And your residents are very susceptible to these bed sores. So yeah, it may be fair for you to expect to do a lot of bed making during your first few days or weeks at work. Or in my case, three months. When I'm not doing bed making, I often talk to the residents, talk to the residents, and pretend to understand them. I can hear you asking, why bed making and why no caregiving? Why three months? Mm-hmm. Dude, that's because during that time, I was still studying in a vocational or in a caregiving vocational school. My focus were my studies. My time at the workplace is limited and probably the most easiest, the most safest task that an inexperienced staff like me can do is bed making. Why three months, you say? Well, probably it took me that long of a time to prove myself capable enough to do other caregiving tasks. So that's it, that's the end of the video. Those are some of the things I experienced during my first few days or weeks at work as a caregiver here in Japan. I'm very sorry for my voice, but yeah, kazihita kara. So you know the drill, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, leave a like and share this video with a friend if you have one. And of course, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Thank you for watching, see you in the next one. Bye! What I'm trying to say is this. So yeah, on your first day of work, don't forget to bring a, mo a memo pad, a notepad. Notepad or memo pad. So yeah, the bottom line is, write down your name. <laughs>